what is very fascinating is we're bringing two people today that have had, they're coming from their hearts. They're not, they don't get paid for this. They don't have to tell this to anybody. They don't have to do anything. They are coming because we are coming to that place of awakening where transparency is, is now happening. So they are giving their own personal experiences. So today, um, and also too, I'd like to invite you after they're over, we're going to give them about 40, I mean 50, 55 minutes of time. We're going to do our little Adam thing. And then if you want to stay afterwards, we will have more of a personal discussion. But because this is uh, our Adam time and we have people zooming in and we want to honor those that need to leave or whatever, we'll, we'll, that's how we'll run this today. So anyway. Today, I'd like you to give a very warm welcome to Penny Bradley and Eric Heckler. Well, thank, thank you very much for having us. I've yes. been to the Adam community just a fistful of times, and I have found it to be a very inviting and welcoming and very open-minded community. Um, with special thanks to Steve and, as of recently, Jimmy. Um, for uh, letting me know that this culture really is that open. Uh, I have been myself an experiencer in a certain capacity and I do things on the internet now. I have um, a Facebook page and a YouTube page where I go under the title of deciphering my experience because that's where I'm at right now. Um, I've had peculiar travels and I'm trying to get stuff dialed in. In my deciphering of my experience I have met the wonderful Penny Bradley who has <laughs> who has been doing diligent work in researching um, the same stuff that I've been looking into. And as Dawn had mentioned, we're hitting a time in life when paradigms are changing because what you'll find is the information we're presenting is not inquirer level information. There are tons of facts and referenceable information available to your fingertips right now and has been for decades. And Penny is going to be kind enough to show us some of her efforts on this. Okay. Uh, my background that led me to start talking in 2013, an NSA agent used my remember code on me. And I was suddenly inundated with 60 years worth of memories all in German. And the thing at the top of the pile was... Jurassic Park raptors breaking in through a cafeteria wall and attacking children who were all screaming in German. So, I didn't know what these memories were. I had no idea. But they obviously couldn't have been here. So, I spent the next three years researching everything I could find anywhere related to Germans dealing with dinosaurs. And I, it took me a complete tour of conspiracy theory, alternative history, everything out there. And what I've got in this presentation, which I called Mapping the Secret Space Program, is research. Now, I do have presentations that are my personal history, but this presentation is an overview of the umbrella. And how many of you have ever heard of the Secret Space Program? Awesome. One week ago. Yeah, we can go. It's a start. Okay. Um, how many of you have heard of the possibility that Germany was in space? Okay, good. Um, how many of you understand that the Americans followed them within 20 years? That the Apollo mission was not the end-all, be-all? <laughs> okay, good. Now, I s usually start with the Sonora Aero Club. I live in Central California, not far from Sonora. And it's a 15-minute drive. So in our cemetery there, there are all these tombstones with SAC on them. I had to research that, too. It's the Sonora Aero Club, and it was 
In the 1850s, Sonora was a large city then, it, and the voting for who was going to be capital of California, they came in second. <coughs> wow. So this they came in before San Francisco. So this was a big place then. Now it's a sleepy little town of about 15,000. But in those days, it was a major place. So these Prussian scientists showed up and engineers showed up in Sonora and they already had dirigibles. I have trouble pronouncing that, so I did good this time, okay? <laughs> and Charles Delshaw was an artist, a, a drafting artist, which is in the 1800s, that was a lot different from a drafting artist now. A drafting artist now does blueprints and the exact blueprint drawings. In those days, they did watercolors and made a point of every bolt was oversized so you could see it in the drawings. And these this collection is about this thick, and I believe it belongs to Bosley. He's, Walter? He's a speaker on the SSP circuit. I think it's Walter. I, I can't I'm remember. not sure. I'm not sure what his first name is, but his last name's Bosley. And there's a whole series of presentations he's done where he shows the art and I don't own it and he has it pat he has it copyrighted so I can't use it in presentations but these things are lovely and they look just like they're out of a steampunk novel but what they were doing was working on a secret ingredient to add to mercury to put it in an engine similar to what Victor Schauberger came up with 50 years later. And when you use a spiral rotating engine with mercury in it, it creates an anti-grav field. So the ships that have these engines literally are falling into a hole in front of them. They are not pushed. They're just falling. And this, and, is, and this is tech that has literally just been released in patent form within the last six months by the United States Navy, that this yes. anti-grav technology is now legitimate on the street. You can look it up. Um, the rotating engines, the mercury drives, and the anti-grav capacity was released under the name of, it was um, Salvatore Pais is the gentleman on the patents, and there was three patents in regards to anti-gravity and free energy that were released in the last six months. When you use straight mercury, it will eventually transmute into gold, which you would think that was a great thing, right? Except if you're in an engine that causes you to fall anyway, and you suddenly don't have that engine, you're down. So these particular group of scientists and engineers were working on an ingredient to prevent the mercury from turning into gold. And they called the combined thing a red mercury. And when they finally figured it out, they started flying back to Prussia. Well, dirigibles are noted for being difficult to steer. And with an anti-grav engine, they were more so. And so there are sightings all over the United States in the newspapers in the 1880s, 1890s. And then in the late 1890s, you start seeing these sightings in the newspapers in Western Europe. And then they get to, to Prussia. Um, who at that time was, what did they call that? The, the German Empire or something? It was under Bismarck. And this was just before... Byzantine? The what? Byzantine? No. Byzantine is the Greek... I'm way off. Greek, way off. The Greek part of Rome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. 
So they flew back to Germany under Bismarck, and this became a joint property of the German Empire and the German aristocracy. And it's very important that you keep in mind that the German people were tribal. And so each tribe had its own two or three families that ran the tribe. And those people were traditionally raised to look out for the members of the tribe. It was their, their divine right to rule, but it was their divine responsibility to shepherd the people. So these tribes had no clue what democracy meant. So now let's see if I can click this and get it to go to the next one. The, the word you used of what they're flying, what does that mean? A dirigible? Yes. It's a... It's a hot, it's a giant hot air balloon of a specific type that's held up. It holds, it's full of, the balloon part is full of hydrogen. Thank you. Um, I forget the name of the one that caught fire. Hindenburg. The Hindenburg. They were, they went out of fashion because the Hindenburg <coughs> caught fire in, in, I believe it was New York. Huh? I think it was Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm from California. In our neighborhood. Close enough. It's in the right. It's in the right neighborhood. So, the German aristocracy. I had started into this already. Um, by the 1900s, the aristocracy in Germany had started forming secret societies where they could practice their traditional occult religions without the Lutherans and the Catholics going ape at them. <laughs> so um, one of them was the Tula Society, and it was men. And the Thuil Society was women. And these were in the same families. So the women, the Thuil Society, was doing what we call CE5 today. Has anybody, have you heard of CE5? No. no. Okay, it's where you go and you have a nighttime party and you psychically call in ETs. And amazingly, they get lots of sightings. But these ladies had contacted the Aldebaran, the Draco, and the Jahami. These are different ET races, and these are all physical beings. They did, they were not, they were not seance material. These were physical things like us. The Jahami are who historically are called Anunnaki. Have you heard of those right. guys? Okay, some of you have. And the, uh, their plan, these ladies, there were six of them and they never cut their hair and they practiced things we would call witchcraft. And their plan was to visit Aldebaran. So, and they were, it, they were peaceniks. They did not want to weaponize space. Okay, Neuschwabenland. During World War II, Hitler nationalized the secret society groups. It, I put Illuminati in this. I since learned it was the aristocracy but he was nationalizing that effort. And Maria Orsich basically, she was in charge of the Frill ladies and she basically told him to go F himself. <laughs> <laughs> and she had enough personal power and prestige that he, did, he was unable to arrest her. So she allowed his scientists Oh, I'm in the way. She allowed his scientists to come in and copy the blueprints and watch how the construction methods. And then they had to go back to their labs and figure out how to attach weapons. That was why Hitler lost the war was because 
they couldn't figure out how to attach weapons until the war was already lost. You have, you have an engine that spins. You have a ship that spins. And you have weapons that can't. Because you can't target anything if they're spinning. And so the combination was a real challenge to these guys. And the aristocracy had been exploring Antarctica in an area that belongs to, um, well, it's Queen, Maud, Queen Maud's Land is what we call it now. And it was a place where they found there was a volcano underground with hot springs that sent a river underneath the glacier. And so they used submarines and went underneath and into it and there they built a city there with an industry. And that's where they took all their ships. They took the some they took all the, the ships that were in progress there. And so they, by the end of the war, they were already independent and in between the two world wars, the bankers had been printing money as fast as they possibly could with the intention of devaluing the currency. It got, at, at its worst, it got to where it took an entire wheelbarrow full of uh, bills to be able to buy a single loaf of bread. The money was that worthless. So all the people that were on government pensions post-World War I were starving to death. So these people were just absolutely motivated. World War II was going to happen simply because their people were starving. So Operation High Jump was when Richard Byrd <coughs> went with an entire group of ships to Neuschwabenland and he did some exploratory things and he located exactly where the base was and decided to try to go under the glacier. And the Germans, well, there's still argument if it was German Hanabu ships or if it was Draco saucers but there was a battleship that was cut in half and sunk with all hands on board and that was in 1947 when Truman was president and when Eisenhower came in next election they the Germans took a fleet of Hanabu and buzzed the White House three weekends in a row. So when you see those photos of, of the ships buzzing the White House, those are German ships. Has anybody seen those photos before and, and the associated news articles from the time? Mm -hmm. It's all very referenceable. Yeah, this is all 3D, real, fact-based. So because Neuschwabenland won the Battle of Operation High Jump, they dictated terms to us. And we common folk were allowed to keep the illusion that we were running the show. But we have not been since 1953. Everything they have told you about your government since 1953 is a lie. Everything. So we have been ruled through a liaison officer who was the director of the Trilateral Commission. And it was originally David Rockefeller, and I'm not sure the name of the man who replaced him when he died. <coughs> All major corporations have someone from Neuschwabenland on their board of directors. All of the spy agencies were to include SS in major positions. And this was called Operation Paperclip by the CIA. And you can, you can research Operation Paperclip. Uh, the last, what, 15, 20 years, there's a lot of 
mistaken fear porn propaganda mm -hmm. about Operation Paperclip. And there is a man out there, um, Douglas Dietrich, who claims that the Japanese won World War II instead of the Germans. But my answer to that is if you look in the records, there are no Japanese added to these corporations or spy agencies until the 1980s. So at the end of the war, it was Germans added to everything. So that's where this comes from. And SS is for Schwarze Sonne, which translates to Black Sun. It, I kept finding all this other stuff out there, people assuming it meant this, that, or the other, and it was like the officers had always said, okay, we'll deal with that. <laughs> you know, but it's really Black Sun, which is a order. It's an occult order where they have metaphysical practices. Okay. In the period of time between 1947 and 1953, America changed the Office of Strategic Services to the CIA. They changed the Office of Scientific Investigations to the NSA. The War Department was changed to the Defense Department, and we have not declared war since. So this is, this is proof something major changed, and we have not been told about it officially. And I know from my service with them in space, they always set up at least two competing groups, and they'll have some sort of contest between them with a reward for whoever does best. This is the way they operate. It's it. They use carrot and stick. Similar to how the global banking elite might be manipulating nations to war? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, ha they had tr issues with the bankers, so... Uh, Nachtwaffen is the proper name of the Neuschwabenland space fleet. All of the higher level officers are of German descent because they don't trust Americans at all, <laughs> ever, for any reason. Uh, most of the higher level officers are also SS, Schwarze Sonne. And in space, that means they have drank black goo. So. Black goo is an AI that enhances your intellect, it enhances your health, it enhances your strength, but it's at the expense of your empathy and, and basically your humanity. So you suddenly are, well, we were suddenly the same level as the ETs we were dealing with. So you drank it? Yeah, I drank it. Mm. I had to because I was a navigator. And to be that level of officer, <clears throat> it was required. There is a minimum rank that you can have and hold that position. So um, Neuschwabenland has a quota of people that each country has to give them because they ultimately won World War II. And it's 150,000 Americans every year, starting from when they could tur start turning them over. And I was in the first class that they were able to give them competent people. And the last NSA agent who contacted me said I was the last survivor of the Langley class of 1964. And I was mortified they considered it a class. Um, the CIA is responsible for the mind fracture process so that when they return us, they don't re we don't remember it unless someone activates it or they found MRIs 
can activate your memories. They seem to be very triggering for folks that have gone through the programs. It seems like there's a, a, a two-week delay that folks start to get their bleed back occurring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you have weird memories or anomalies in your life, an MRI might not be a good idea. <laughs> if, they, if they asked me before they activated me to, to remember all this, I don't think I would have said yes because the memories I have are really traumatic and knowing that I did these things was, is really hard to live with. I have nightmares, I have flashbacks. Um, I kind of half go into disassociation to talk about it because some of this stuff is really dark. Um, with the SS officers and the CIA, they got the German versions of the technologies. And these had been enhanced by ETs. So there was a lot of ET involvement with the Germans during World War II. And so mind control, rocketry, zero point energies, time travel, warp drives, exotic weapons, robotics, genetics, um, cloning, the Germans had fully mature, cl a whole battalion of clones in World War II, which meant they had the technology in World War I. So this, all the sciences out there are far more advanced than we the people, people here are told. And with SS officers also came the ET allies. When I was at Langley, there were Naga, there were Mantids, there, when they sent me to Montauk, there was a warrior Draco. So they've got ETs all through that level of American government at this point. Well, I was taken in 1959. So, um, and I've had this come up on my YouTube. I have not always been old and fat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when, when you are in space, because they have regeneration technology, they keep you at what they consider your optimum weight, and they keep women at about 25 to 29, and they keep men in their mid-30s because they think women are prettier than, <laughs> <laughs> and men are, are more are at peak efficiency in their 30s, so. <laughs> It is what it is. German efficiency in engineering. German efficiency in engineering. Now, <clears throat> each topic on here has the level that the public knows. They have the level that the regular black ops knows, which would be like DARPA. And then they have the special access operations that are not even allowed to tell the president what they're doing. And they are the core of why the Pentagon can't balance their budgets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. All, all of these operations are intended to be timeless, and they could give a darn about who happens to be here every four years at the helm of the American government. It doesn't mean anything to them. And it's all coming out of your tax dollar. So that's where the trillions of dollars that disappear every year are going are into this. So. Um, Does anybody remember the headline on September 10th, the day before September 11th, all over the news in the country? No. The DOD was missing $2.3 trillion? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the next day something happened that made us cut more checks. Yeah. They destroyed the records for that missing money. When they took down the uh, building seven. seven and the Pentagon, the missile, and yes, it was a <clears throat> missile, not a plane, that hit the Pentagon, took out their, their bookkeeping for these projects. Um, there's a lot of dispute about what President Eisenhower knew, when he knew it, how deeply involved he was in it. Um, the records are like all over the place and 
I did at one point find a copy of the Treaty of Grayada with the Zetas and six months later it was offline. So there's been a lot of censorship in these, these topics. So if you find something that looks accurate, download it. Print it. Print it because they're going through people's computers and deleting things. Um, I was investigating a topic about the Oklahoma City bombing and they fried my C drive. So now we know that Ike dealt with Valiant Thor who was Shahami slash Anunnaki from Venus. Uh, he interacted with Zetas personally and he may have interacted with Drake, the Draco Empire because they're getting tired of everybody else being here and so they're trying to terraform it for them to come back. The fact that they cannot live here as it is now proves they haven't been here all along. Earth has been a Jahami province and the Galactic Authority I, that's not their real name, but this is how it translates in my head. The Galactic Authority is angry about the mess here. And they've started arresting and trying the Jahami that were involved. Some of them have already been executed. So justice is in order, but they cannot interfere with the way we run things. We have to stand up and say enough is enough and demand justice. Until we demand justice, nobody's going to do anything either way, good or bad. It's all on us. So, <clears throat> so um, I'm friends with Laura Eisenhower, and she tries to do the entire denial route that her great-grandfather didn't know anything. But there's too many records saying he did. Okay. Ike contacted the Jason Society, and that is a group you can find on Google. And he wanted to deal with the concept of what was going to happen with this Draco terraforming, which was presented to him as overpopulation and that we were going to eventually choke ourselves into oblivion. <coughs> so they came up with three alternatives. Blow a hole in the ozone layer to let the heat and the pollution out. That is why there's a hole in the ozone layer. It had nothing to do with spray bottles of Aquanet. <laughs> <laughs> Although we did use a lot of Aquanet in the 70s. <laughs> Build underground cities for the elite to survive. Yes. When they got underground, they found there were already seven other races there that had been there for a long time and wanted nothing to do with us. Or go into space and build colonies. There was a documentary yes. that they presented as fictional. So it, the names were changed, the stories were changed a little bit, but the video they showed at the end was real, and the video was from the first joint American-Russian landing on Mars in 1962. <laughs> and they ran it on April Fool's Day so nobody would believe it. <laughs> And the, this was in the BBC, and they only ran it once. Um, there is a copy on YouTube if you look for it. It's called Alternative 3. Okay. Ike made a big mistake because he was basically a decent Christian man. He was completely freaked out that there were ETs, and it meant that everything he knew was wrong. And so he basically shut down, told the CIA to do whatever it took to make sure some of us survived. 
and that is the mandate that the CIA has used to take over the world. And they are completely out of control. They are now running the drug trade. They are running human trafficking. Human trafficking. They are running mind control. They are running weapons. Um, they are behind the cartels in South America and Mexico. They have gone through and destroyed entire regions of the planet trying to work with that mandate. So <clears throat> at this point, I will say my solution to a lot of this is contact your Congress critter and demand that they investigate the CIA for human trafficking. Don't mention space or it'll go in the deep file. But Congress has the authority to supervise the CIA. They just don't have the balls. <laughs> <laughs> so, if we the people put pressure under them, they will have to choose between the devil and the deep blue sea. So, okay, <clears throat> this, this one is a couple of slides, so don't think it's all on one. Or maybe it is. I, I don't remember. It could be I all on remember. one. It's on one. There I, you go. I, thank I, you. Thank you. I tried <laughs> editing it and then realized I could actually open this. <laughs> um, at first, this was just sitting there with one frame and I couldn't figure out how to open it. Okay, Neuschwabenland is in charge of Nachtwaffen and their colonies in space. And I know there are at least a thousand colonies that have at least a billion people. What? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> there, there are trillions of Germans in space. Okay, they are in charge of America, the CIA, the NSA, the U.S. Navy space program, Solar Warden, which was brought up by McKinnon, Gary McKinnon? Gary. Gary. Mm -hmm. Gary found it while he was hacking the Navy <laughs> computers. And Is, may I jump in on this one? Has anybody heard of Gary McKinnon before? No. This is a really great one. Gary McKinnon hacked the um, NASA computer system back when everything was dial up. Yes. And, and the hack was, he got in a lot of trouble because he didn't really hack, he just guessed a password. <laughs> and he got in. So he learned a lot of stuff. Uh, the most important thing I would say was he found a list that referenced the captains of the off-world space fleet. And a list of six s space ships. Correct. That were U.S. Navy. So, yeah, he is the physical proof we have that there is a Solar Warden program. Uh, the U.S. Air Force Space Program that was called Earth Defense Force and is now Trump's Space Force. They are the Coast Guard of the planet. <laughs> they, Neuschwabenland is in charge of the British Commonwealth. Even the Queen has to do what they say. And through that, they are in charge of the Five, Eye, Five Eyes agencies. That's UK, America, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. Why are they called the Five Eye agencies? What does that reference? That references surveillance of the people. They're all working together to surveil there's peoples. So it would be illegal for me to surveil my people, but it's not illegal for me to surveil her people if she lets it happen. And then we just transfer info because then I didn't do anything wrong to my people and she just hands me a file and then I don't cheat and I hand her a file and neither one of us have broken a law. And the Five Eyes are also allied with Israel. So anything that any American agency has on you, the Mossad also has. <laughs> it, it gets thicker and deeper the longer you dig. Okay. So why aren't you dead? Because talking matters, because then you confirm what you said is true. 
I've been caught ten times with energy weapons, and the agencies are asking, why aren't you dead? Okay. Well, <laughs> and they broke my shoulder last year, and I had to have surgery to reconstruct it completely, and I'm just now getting to where I can do this. <laughs> so they... That, at that time they said, well, we can't figure out why, but we know we can't kill you, so we know we can make you hurt. So that's the new approach they're taking with me, is to torture me. Okay, they're also in charge of the USSR Russian Federation. Putin is working with them. And the KGB, I believe, is now called the FSR or something similar. They had to have they had to have surveillance too, and the Russian Federation does have its own space program. Uh, they wear green uniforms in space. Okay, this is an official document that you can find online. The Transnational Security and Intelligence Binational and Compact Agreements. The United Nations Space Security Compact. So, all of these guys are working together under the United Nations, under the Germans in space. When I found that, I was like, oh my god, there is no end to this. So, yeah. And I don't know why red bubbles like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. This lovely item came from a lady, Melinda. Do you remember her name? Melinda? Melinda. I don't think I know Melinda. She's in the group. <laughs> wait, wait. Which group? Civilization. I don't know her. Okay. I have a group on Facebook. It's secret. And there are just over 300 of us who are all veterans of one or the other of these programs. And this, Melinda Leslie. Okay. And she's been out on the circuit for years. And this is her graph. And this is what happens... MELAB stands for two things, military abductions or military laboratories. They are two separate and overlapping groups. And this is what happens to the folks that, that get taken. And somewhere along the line, you're picked up by an ET who wants to check you out, sometimes more than one ET. And each of these events can happen more than once. You might have all of them, you might have one of them, you might have one of them 40 times or longer. But this is, this is the range of what they do to us. So you have to deal with memories, you also have to do with, deal with being picked up all the time. I have not been picked up since early June, but there for a while I was being picked up a couple of times a night. Okay. I have a question. How do they come to your lady? They have a device called Personal Portal Tech, and it opens a red energy ring in the hallway next to my bedroom. And these guys in black can, black um, fatigues will come out and they don't have any markings on them so I don't know exactly who they are. But some people, it, they only send one and with me they send four because I don't want to go. I don't want to go and I fight and I bite and they come out with damage. but. I end up gone anyway. So, true. Yeah. 
he's sleeping next to me while they're coming in and grabbing me. And, uh... Does a shotgun work? <laughs> Unfortunately, no. <laughs> no, these are humans, but they have shielding. Mm -hmm. They have tech. They have technology to protect themselves from anything you do to them, except a hand can reach through it, but weapons cannot. It knows the difference between biologicals and, and inorganics. So you're like, these people came and got you, and, and they have the technology to make everybody in the room go to sleep, so you have no help. They leave you awake or semi-awake, and they're hoping that you don't remember, but I do. And they wear, they're basically wearing the mask. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So you can't identify them real world. And, and it's, it's like you, you go and they take you for years. And then they bring you back to within five minutes of when they took you because each point in time space has a set of coordinates. And once they have that set of coordinates, they can come back 50 times to that same time and place. So they, the tendency is they pick you up, they bring you back, they pick you up, they bring you back, and they pick you up and bring you back. And it's like boing, boing, boing. And if they get the return period close enough to when they took you, your brain won't remember it. So you wake up in the morning and you're exhausted and it feels like years since you've seen your partner or your pets and you're like, it has been. Most of us are taken for 20 or 40 or 60 years depending on our genetics and which which agency is taking us. So I have a question. Has anybody on the light side, so to speak, picked you up? I've been visited by folks on the light side. They have not taken me. Um, the group called the Guardians yes. has contacted me. And they have told me that as long as I speak the truth and don't water it down, that they will protect me and that I won't die. So. You just heard a lot. There are days it's like I wish they would let me die because it hurts so bad. But um, I was promised after July, no, June 12th, yeah, June 12th, I was promised that I would not be ab allowed to be abducted again. And That's cool. I, wow. <laughs> about damn time, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's about damn time. I'm 64. You know, when do I get to retire? But no, um, I'm, yeah. So, um, yeah. <clears throat> okay, America has chafed by being ruled by Neuschwabenland, especially since the common people don't realize that it's going on. And having to pay tribute and having to send their best and brightest to serve in, in there. And they, the Germans wanted Americans to help with their colonies for from the perspective of genetic diversity. If you don't have enough genetic diversity, the colony eventually fails from inbreeding. I mean, we've all heard the stories about the inbreds. Mm -hmm. So the Americans got help. really great people. What they are, are the working class of the Anunnaki. Now, we have all these historical myths about the royals, who live a very long time. Some of them are good, some of them are bad, most of them are a mix. And then you get their working class guys who live to be two to four hundred years old and have 
health issues because they've had too many nuclear wars on their world. And they wanted to come to Earth because we haven't got the same kind of radiation issues. And they are actually engaged in a covert invasion. And their feet, they're dripping technology to the American government in exchange for land for bases. And they have a base at Area 51, they have a base at Area 54, they have a base at Pine Gap, Australia, they have a base in Tanzania, in Africa. <laughs> These have all been since the 1980s. Thank you. So this is, I have a friend who lives in um, Louisville, Kentucky. He overlooks the back entrance to, Knock, to Fort Knox. And he is dealing with tall whites on an ongoing and regular basis. And because he's similar in appearance, he sit and senses them, they are hostile with him. So the tall whites and Solar Warden is probably 80% of why the Germans don't trust the Americans. Is there a base in Alaska? Yep. There might be, but I'm not aware of it. So, I don't know everything. As far as interesting places to study in Alaska, and I don't want to make it that it's a definitive association in any way, shape, or form, but just a geographical area that people accuse of a lot of stuff happening is the Mount Hayes area by Delta Greeley. That, um, there have been folks that have said that potentially there's something under. Okay, super soldiers were an immediate thing that, that the DOD wanted. So they started Operation Moonshadow. Um, Randy Kramer talks about that. Any of you know who he is? Okay. It was a program where they took, they took sperm and eggs from the population that they wanted to create super soldiers from. So there wasn't actual sex between them, but they did the lab thing and created who they wanted to create and then left the kids with parents that they had assigned. So a lot of these kids were in abusive situations and a lot of the abductions in the 60s, 70s, and 80s where they took reproductive tissues and they, the people thought they were taken by ETs, uh, they were actually taken by U.S. military. I know some of my early abductions, they wore reptilian suits and whenever you're scared and, and half awake, they looked pretty real. But after I stopped being scared, I saw the zippers and started unzipping them. <laughs> <Good for you. laughs> that kind of kid. But, um, and my generation of the kids taken to serve in space were all shot up with ET DNA. Some of us had Draco and some of us had Zeta. And the idea was, one, to make us unacceptable to the Germans for their colonies, and two, so that we could live around the ET without freaking out. And as a side effect, some of us got abilities that before that only ETs had had, like the ability to navigate hyperspace. Um, so I'm a valued commodity to the Germans because I replace a Draco on their ship. Uh, there were two mercenary companies and they were started by doctors, SS doctors at the CIA who decided to make money off of us. And one is Kruger and the other is Monarch. Kruger modifies their people, and they are what Star Trek based the Borg on. 
and Monarch shoots them up with black goo. So neither one is dealing with actual humans anymore. They're dealing with people who have all been modified. And they sell their services and we end up with Monarch supporting one side in a war and Kruger supporting the other side. And so we have humans in space in wars we have nothing to do with killing each other. So Business as usual, just a further area out. <laughs> yeah. And how they operate is they purchase an altar and a tissue sample to grow a clone. And they have technology to prevent the clone from developing its own mind. How many of you think that a, clo a clone is soulless? The soul comes with the DNA. Mm -hmm. The consciousness is in the DNA. They have technology that prevents its development. That's why if you're in a group that uses clones, you do a 20 and back because at the end of 20 years, the clone's mind and soul will push you out. And for all, pr clones are basically an identical twin. So the technology has you possessing your identical twin with all of the implications that go with that. So I have alters who have served in clone bodies and you never quite feel like it belongs to you because it doesn't. So when I hear about all these politicians being popped into clone bodies, I'm like, Y'all, yeah, that don't work well. <laughs> so, and at the end of service, the clone is killed and the altar returns to the natural body, which has been held in stasis. So, and then they time travel you back to whenever you were originally kidnapped. So. So while you're in altar, while you're in the job for 20 years, do you have, do you know that you have been taken? I mean, are you aware of, of what's your reality? I mean, is your reality what? just the moment, this is where you're at, and the other, the other veil is? I have, I was given 2,200 altars. Yes. And I have reintegrated 31 of them. So I still have a long way to go. In, in regards to that question, though, Technically, I, I see where you're going with it. Technically, we're not supposed to remember anything. Yeah. The system, when used appropriately, has people going to their jobs during the day <clears throat> and remembering nothing. So technically, yeah. folks like Penny and myself are dysfunctional. The system's not working. There's a failure in it, and that's the abnormality. For the most part, you don't remember anything. Yeah, my abnormality was an NSA agent used my remember code. By accident? On purpose. He did it on purpose, yeah. On purpose. I was deliberately activated. And why the NSA chose to activate me is the million dollar question. I have no idea. And the man was the, the man was killed. The guy. The guy that did it was killed in twenty sixteen, so I can't ask him. And so was his boss who I also knew. So <clears throat> Do you think it might have been to create the movie? Um, no. I think it had to do with... I think it had to do with an interagency war. And that the NSA had lost funding after 9-11 and that the, N the CIA had also lost funding because they lost the trust of the administrations. Mm -hmm. And what ended up happening is now both agencies are operating on the budget that one of them used to have. And so they're fighting over money. And because the CIA is behind this crap, mm -hmm. all I have to do is speak the truth and it makes the NSA look great. Mm -hmm. But the NSA is who interacts with the ETs. 
and gets the technology and they're trading human human slaves for this technology so they're no angels either oops I skipped one hit the mouse too hard planetary corporations remember Neu Schwabenland had a person on the board of directors of every corporation back a few slides back mm -hmm. Well, some of those are used to supply Nachtwaffen. And they have this loose confederation. And if you have heard about Corey Good or Q and, and their alliance, their alliance works for planetary corporations. It's not an independent group like they're presenting it. And they are responsible for the worst of the atrocities in space. They kidnap civilians from Earth and convert them into cyborgs for sale to ETs for ever more advanced toy tech. That's all the ETs are giving us is toys that they don't expect us to be able to do anything with. But because humans are good at engineering, we're taking this toy and this toy and this toy and this toy and we're making something useful out of it which shocked the ETs considerably. But the other thing that the Planetary Corporations does is they're finding people like me when we die and we're being put into a magnetic bottle so that we cannot incarnate elsewhere and they keep the tissue samples and keep rebodying us for further slavery. So we are never done. And they are who's running the alliance. They are attacking the German ships and then removing the people's programming chips and re reprogramming the crew to serve on, in their own fleet. And then people like Corey Good are telling the people that, well, the Germans are surrendering. Well, not exactly. Uh, this is our expected actual service. You're created in a lab, implanted into your mother. In my generation, the mother was picked up after she was already pr pregnant and the embryo was modified. So then you're born. I was first picked up for this trauma-based mind fracture when I was four. And that particular service went 55 years. And I was time traveled to within 15 minutes of when they originally took me, so my parents never knew I was gone. Except I came back with amnesia because I had been mind wiped. And I have been, I have, 50 years of memories of being taken every Friday because I was left with the cover memory of being in a kelp bed as a mermaid. <laughs> so, Good cover it, memory. Yeah, at least it was a pleasant cover memory. Nice you know? rest at least. Yeah. Um, but they take you and take you and take you and take you and use you as long as they want you for whatever they want you to do and the point at which like here that's a point at which remembering is easier and if you are at one of those points and you have an MRI odds are you're going to remember at least something and you know, so the first one that I had, which would be this one, was the memory that was activated in 2013. Now, Labyrinth Group is part of the ACIO, the Ad Advanced Contact. I don't remember. I thought it was uh, 
intelligence organization? Yeah. Contact intelligence organization, something to that effect? So it, it's it means that, even if that's not the right word. They're, they're tasked with paying attention to basically everything that's exchanging in and off the planet. They try to keep tabs on everyone doing everything just so that someone's keeping track. It's, it's, they're, they're, the labyrinth part, the labyrinth group is part of that group, and they are tasked with the technology transfer program with the reptoids, the Shahami, Shahami and Tall Whites, the Draco, um, and the Zetas. And reptoids are not the same as Draco. There are at least a thousand different reptilian groups out there, and only one of them is Draco. ACIO is on the Wingmakers website. They're that related. By the way, the Wingmakers ancient, ancient cave was destroyed winter of 2019. The CIA blew it up. Because they could. They don't, they don't like sharing. I hate to say this, but I need to be at a meeting with a camera in 15 minutes. Okay. And I want to hear what you have to say. And for everybody that's listening, there's plenty of corroboration for this out there. There's lots of public sources you can find it from. Her, her experience is unique to her, but there are lots of similar kinds of experiences and lots of people speaking out about it. Well, let me flash through to the, okay, this is the structure of the labyrinth group. And that is the one that's important. That's the most important graphic in this entire presentation. The yellow <coughs> are the ETs. And this, this is the map. And Randy Kramer's group is part of this. So, for those who know who he is. And this group, the Earth Defense Force, is now Trump's Space Force. And those of us who have served in any of these groups have taken the assumption that the Space Force was designed to hide us forever. You have 70 years of people being used as slave labor, being kidnapped, being modified, being treated like we're assets instead of people. And with the new Space Force, they're going to say they're starting now and pretend none of us happened, except there's too many of us talking. But they've buried people before, haven't they? I mean, there's a lot of people that think that, that the, the exposure of these programs started with Corey Good. It didn't. Michael Ralph is the first one I know of, and Bill Cooper. Andrew Passaggio. Andrew Passaggio. Yeah. I, know, I know him on Facebook. Um, there's a whole list of folks <laughs> that, huh? Go ahead. I don't want to interrupt but when you're ready for the question. I just wanted to, we're a metaphysical group, and so we're all, uh, we all have this maybe false paradigm. Maybe it's a, this is really eye-opening for more people. But the idea of consciousness, the idea of uh, free will, the idea of uh, increasing our awareness to what happens when you die, can you bring this back? full circle to the notion of, hey, we're just light beings landed on a planet. Maybe that's not what we are. <laughs> that's not my experience of the reality as human beings. Okay. We, are on a sl we are on a prison planet, right. and there are people taking advantage of that. There are lots of people taking it, people used loosely. There are lots of folks out in the galaxy that are using this planet to dump their dissidents and traitors and criminals. And this planet was designed to be a nursery for baby souls. For folks who had not yet figured out what, 
why beating each other to a bloody pulp was wrong. It was, and when they got to 52% service to others, they would be allowed to leave. Well, the rest of the galaxy figured out, oh, they're trapped. We can dump our, our baddies there, be rid of them until they reach 52% service to others. So at the point we are right now, we have about half baby souls and about half criminals. And that's what's showing up in the culture. So. If I could jump in, I would say that right back to what you're saying. So I get that this group is a metaphys metaphysical and you're looking for like almost an, an energy level or a growth thing. What's being presented here is exclusively just offering you more perspective. It's not changing anything you already knew. We have energies to us. We have a reality about us. Our energies mean more and reality goes further about us than we've been considering. That's all this does. It just takes everything you've already known, all the way that people already function in proximity, and we're moving it outwards. This isn't great stuff as a humanity. We're not doing great things on this planet. What makes you think we'd be doing great things off of it? What makes us so different than anyone else out there that would be as good or bad as us? That's what makes it better. And the more that we concentrate, the more that we meditate, the more we connect to ourselves, the deeper to that origin point our consciousness allows and mm -hmm. we pair up with others that also have that matching consciousness while also awakening their being. Mm -hmm. I think veils get applied to us and we can remove them. And we're just from a position where we see some veils that have been applied to us and we perceive that other people have the veils on them and we're just trying to work together to take everybody's experiences and collectively say, you know what, I think there's more going on here. So the notion of a soul making a choice to come here and have an experience, such as yours, such as mine, each person, maybe, maybe there's, a, there's a blurring of that aspect. And, and what, yes, and, and, and there's attention. This is the distortion side of... of I did not kind of believe idea. that I had agreed to this life. And my higher self decided to show my past life self reading the, the contract and signing it. Wow. So I have not seen the contract itself, so I'm still on a day-to-day, -day, oh my God. But wouldn't you have the power to break the contract? Don't no. As sovereign? I was I was shown the consequences if I break it. Wow. So um, yeah. those consequences were not what I wanted to deal with. So you know, I, here's what I'd like to do, guys. Um, I would like to go ahead and close our Adam, close our Zoom, and then I'd like to stay as long as you all want to and um, finish our Adam official and then maybe order in pizza. I don't know about you guys, but I want to hear more of this. Can I make one quick comment? Very quick. I want to wrap around the very beginning of what you said. This can make us feel really defeated, but it doesn't. What you said initially is that we need to not just be metaphysical, but act in reality so that we are changing our world, and then we will get the help we need. Mm -hmm. We can't just sit up there and be spiritual. We've got to act on it. Have yeah. help. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, so if we may, may we yes. give Penny a big hand? Woo!